today we're going to briefly cover basics of modeling. This isn't going to be financial modeling exactly. This is just going to be a model that you could make to solve any problem uh, that has variables. So what is a model? You've probably heard that word before. For example, a weather model is a you know calculations that takes inputs, calculates, and produces a result or outputs, which is a weather prediction. So a model is basically anything that can make a prediction or estimate uh, based on inputs and calculations. You can use a model to calculate anything. A really simple example would be how many shoes am I going to put on today? So if I want to find out how many shoes I'm going to put on today, the, you know, the two variables or the inputs that I'll need are how many feet do I have and am I going outside? So those are my inputs. Make these my inputs, outputs, number of shoes. So my, you know, my quick model calculation is I'm going to have two feet and am I going outside? True. Excel makes true equal to 1 and false equal to 0. So I can just multiply these two together. And my output will be uh, two, two shoes today. So it's two shoes today for me. Um, but tomorrow, I'm not going outside. So I can change my model based on this. And if I wanted to make this more complicated, you know, or not more complicated, I can say Monday, Tuesday, I am true, false, true. Um, and then I know what shoes to wear for each of those days. All right, this is a really simple, kind of stupid example because uh, you know you don't really need a model to figure out this this calculation exactly. Uh, but we'll make it a little bit more complicated now, and uh, we're gonna unhide you know my new problem. So my next problem is how many shampoo bottles do we need to order for our hotel? All right, to do this, we're gonna follow the modeling 101 rules that I've created for this. Uh, the first is to plan your inputs. So with the shoes, it's you know, the inputs are how many shoes do I have and am I going outside? For this, uh, how many shampoo bottles do we need to order for our hotel? We need to figure out what is going to determine, you know, the size of our hotel, how many shampoo bottles we need. And I've decided that the best inputs for this are the number of floors in my hotel, the rooms per floor, the vacancy rate, so how many rooms are actually empty on a given night, uh, shampoo bottles per room, how many I'm going to put in there, and how many nights each shampoo bottle lasts. And those are going to determine the number of shampoo bottles I need to fill for night. Um, so I have done number one, plan my inputs. Uh, you know, number two rule is don't hard code. So now that I know my inputs, I could just do a formula with floors, let's say it's 10, rooms for floor is six, vacancy rate is 80%, shampoo bottles per room, uh, let's say it's two, and night each bottle lasts is one. So my answer is 96, but I hard coded everything. I put all of these values into a cell and if I just gave this to someone, they'd be like, okay, that's great, but you were actually wrong about these two variables. And then I'd go back in and I can't remember which ones of these are what. So you never want to do this. You never want hard-coded numbers in a cell unless it's like number of days per week, something that will never change. And we'll get to that in a second. But I laid out all of my you know, inputs here. So I'm going to do it this way. 10, 6, 80%, 2, and 1. Great. And those are all of you know, my hard codes. Those are my inputs. The other thing I want to do is make sure that it's easy to tell what numbers I can change and what numbers I can't change. And we'll get into that in a second also. So I'm going to color code those blue. That is an industry standard for finance and consulting. Blue is hard coded, black is formula or output. Uh, there's other colors like red, which is alert. This is a weird number. Or there's green, which is a link from another cell. But blue and black are really your, your, you know, your bread and butter. All right, the outputs I'm going to do is a black, and I'm going to make it a calculation. Uh, there's definitely a faster way to do this using a formula, but just to show you, I'm going to multiply each one out individually, get 96. Perfect. All right, so now if my boss comes and says, you're wrong, the rooms per floor is actually 8, I can go and just change 8, and I'm like, all right, got a quick answer for you, now we need 128. This is a pretty nice, clear model. Um, the other reason this is good is because let's say I have a different output. Let's say he wants my uh, you know, rooms occupied. All right, well, I didn't anticipate that. So if I had that long string of cal calculations, it'd be hard to just go and delete some. But this is pretty easy. I just multiply this times this times this, and I got you know 86 rooms occupied. Um, and that's why models are great, right? Based on your inputs, which are clearly set up, you can basically do anything here. What about uh, shampoo bottles per week? Well, I know there's seven days in a week always. Um, sometimes there's weekdays and weekends, in which case you would want different inputs, but I can hard code you know, days per week 
because that's never going to change. Uh, if you want to put it as input, you can, but I, I don't like to overdo the inputs. It gets confusing. Um, so I'm just going to do 7 times 96. That's 672. And now, you know, if any of these changes, we get new answers automatically for all three of these without doing a lot of calculations. All right, so that's color coding. Uh, simplify when possible. Again, that's that's the uh, you know, seven times for the week input. It's not going to change ever. So I'm simplifying when possible. And then work in two directions. This is great right now because if I wanted to do you know a second hotel, I could just copy this whole thing, and I have you know my hotel too. But that's not quick. That's you know that gets messy if there's three, four hotels. But this way I can just Copy all my formulas to the right. So I have my inputs and outputs vertically, my number of hotels horizontally, and it creates a nice, clean way to look at these. All right, so I'm going to do one advanced, uh, more advanced technique with you. It's called a data table. This is even bigger, right? Let's say you don't know, and you would just want to see a range of possible answers based on variables. You can pick up to two variables for this. So let's assume vacancy rate stays constant, shampoo bottles, doesn't matter the hotel, vacancy rate's usually this, shampoo bottles per room is this, nice, each bottle lasts is this, and we want to figure out how many shampoo bottles per night. We can use something called a data table, which I'm not going to explain in detail, but I'll show you what it does. Um, so let's make this, we're going to have two, two axes here, let's make this floors, and this rooms per floor, uh, increment. This is just so I don't have to type a new number in each cell. Okay, I'm just going to increment that out. Increment that down. All right, so I'm going to make this table, and I'm going to fill this in. So if there's five floors and five rooms, I want this cell to have the answer of how many shampoo bottles I need per night. That's what this formula is telling us. And I'm going to... make what's called a data table here. My row input cell is the number of floors, and here's my assumption for that. My rooms per floor is the column. Okay, great. So this is kind of cool. Um, oh, I did something wrong here. I forgot to fix this. Okay, so this is great. Uh, now, for any hotel between five and 10 floors and five and 13 room for, rooms per floor, I can just, per, per floor, I can just glance and see how many shampoo bottles I need. So for our current example of 6 and 10, I go to 6 floors, 10 rooms per floor, and that's 96. Comes out to the same answer. But if I had a hotel with 10 and 10, I can see 160. This is great for the end of a model when you've, you've you know, finished it, but there's a lot of inputs, and you just want to see how risky it is, right, if we're wrong. So if we were wrong about the rooms per floor and we got it really far off, you know, we could be off by 40 to, you know, 110 uh, bottles. That's pretty bad. So this will help us design the cushion for the amount of bottles we're going to we're going to order. Um, in 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 reality, we're probably much more likely to be wrong about the vacancy rate than the hotel size because that's pretty fixed. But uh, just an example. Anyway, so this was just an overview on what modeling is and how powerful how can it, it can be used to solve pretty complicated problems. I have a couple you know, other examples that I will give you for homework, and you can practice on your own, and I'll send an answer key as well. Good luck.